Barakim Habarim. Welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brook. You know who you are. And today is the 29th day of December 2022. Only two days to go and we're out of this year. Well, <clears throat> let me ask you, how many times have you heard that a believer should follow the commands of Jesus or Yeshua? My question is this, when did he command anyone ever to do anything? The fact is that Yeshua never commanded anyone to do anything that wasn't already a commandment from his father, God. If you search Google for commandments Yeshua made, it will tell you that he made two, to love the Lord and to love each other. Or you might get another hit, which will say that he gave a command to his disciples to love one another. But those were already given by God in the Torah. I mean, Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18, respectively. This is just one example of how Christianity has replaced God with Jesus, making him into an idol who is interfering with our relationship with God instead of interceding for us. They don't even refer to him as a Messiah, but as a Savior. Just one more way they implicitly identify him as God, which is done in order to separate Jesus from anything Jewish, which only serves to keep Jews from wanting to hear anything about him. What am I talking about? I mean, don't Jews view the Messiah as a savior? Not really. No, we refer to the Messiah, as you can see in the Gospel of Matthew, more than any other gospel, as king, more than as a savior. When you ask a Jew about who his Savior is, he or she will most likely say God. Throughout the Tanakh, God is referred to as our Savior. You know, even when Mary prayed her prayer, which is Luke 1, 46 to 49, she referred to God as her Savior. This will help you to understand why we view the Messiah as our King and not as our Savior. The traditional Jewish expectation of the Messiah is that he will rebuild the temple and reinstitute the Levitical service, being both king and Kohen Hagadol, high priest. And with the temple and Levitical service back and forth, we will thereby be able to receive forgiveness through the sacrificial system. You know, I've written an entire teaching series about this, the, the different expectations of the Messiah between Jews and Christians. And if you want to study it, Go back to the written message. There's a link there. Click on that link or go to Messianic Moment and under blogs, look for teaching series and you'll see it there. Yeah, you know, Christianity has done everything it can over the millennia to totally separate itself from its Jewish roots. And by referring to Jesus, <laughs> never using his real name, Yeshua, as their savior instead of God and well, praying to saints, making graven images all over the churches, saying human beings can forgive sin. And the worst of all is the idea of the Trinity, which makes Jesus equal with God. I mean, the very idea of which is an anathema to Jews. So no, <laughs> no wonder Jews don't want to hear anything about Jesus. To Jews, he is more of a Gentile idol than as the Messiah God promised to send to us. Hey, I'm Jewish by blood on both sides for generations. I never converted to Christianity when I accepted Yeshua as my Messiah. To tell you the truth, I'm more Jewish now than before. And because of this, I can easily see the anti-Jewish messages that Christianity has created in their tenets, their dogma, their ceremonies, and of course their history. I mean, have you heard of the Inquisition, uh, the Crusades? And most Christians cannot see these things. And saying to follow the commands of Jesus is just one more example of Christianity trying to keep Jews away from their Messiah. Now, I usually keep my plugs for my books to the end of these messages, but I really want to tell you that the book I am most proud of is my recent one. And if you want to know more about how Christianity has proliferated lies about the Jewish Messiah, you can go back to the written message and click on the link that I have there, or go to Amazon, look up Stephen R. Brock, or look for a book called The Good News About the Messiah for Jews. So, look, let's end today's message with this. Next time someone mentions the commands of Jesus, set them straight nicely, of course. 
by saying that he never really gave a command. He only repeated the ones that God gave in the Torah. Therefore, if you really, really want to obey Jesus and follow in his footsteps, then take a walk through the Torah. Well, that's it. So thank you for being here. Please share these messages with everyone you know to help this ministry continue to grow. Subscribe. Right-hand margin of the website is a subscribe button here on YouTube. Click that. Do them both, the different lists. And when you're on there, click for notifications. Buy my books. I know I, I already kind of said that, but it never hurts to say it again. And join my Facebook group. It's called Just God's Word. But please agree to the rules or I can't let you join. And I always, always welcome your comments. That's it for this week. So, he trote, and may I wish you an early Shabbat Shalom.